lot, and, and I'm asking you a lot of the questions my subscribers ask me because a lot of them are so pertinent to what we were doing today. And that's, um, how do you fight a taller opponent? And I don't often have the opportunity to spar with people taller than me, especially here in, in Shanghai where, you know, being, being over six feet tall or, you know, 183, 84 centimeters or however tall I am in metric um, is the exception and not the norm. So you're, you're a little taller and, and you have a phenomenal understanding of your reach right here. So what's conventionally taught is get on the inside so he can't use his reach, except um, that's, that's not really something that's easy to do with somebody who's very good totally. at, at that push kick like you are. So that's extremely hard to break the distance with tall people for the simple yeah. reason that if I, if I spin back in, if I spar with someone smaller than me, I'm gonna bait him to go inside actually because I, yeah. I'm really confident with inside. I love inside fight, especially because I can set up my eye kick from the, from the, the clinch or like this. Oh, like that, yes, like so, right in clinching range. So yes, you need to break the distance for the simple reason that if you're smaller than me, you have less reach mostly. There is people who are smaller, but they have like uh, long limbs. So mostly you will get less reach on me. So if you stay away from me, I will just like snipe you using my left, using my left leg, and you will not be able to reach. So you yeah. need to break the distance. So mostly to break the distance, what I can advise people to do is like using a lot of low kicks, like catch and low kicks. Yeah. And um, strong defense to rush in and then use like body shots, a lot of body shots and going back to the face. Tall people mostly, um, we have our hands who drop a bit when we fight like smaller opponent because we are like, okay. yeah, I'm, I'm taller than him. I'm just gonna like bend back a bit and he will not be able to reach me. So uh, when I spar with people taller than me, this is something I use, breaking the distance with the block, going for the body, the face, and a lot of low kicks. But the danger is when I bait people to come in is because I want to set up my knees. Like uh, if you're smaller than me, I would use my knees. And the knees, head kick, man. the knees is just like the best technique against boxing. Oh man! One of the best techniques against boxing. Like heavy knees are extremely hard to uh, to counter. Yeah, and you showed me a couple of ways to throw knees I never even considered before, like dropping it downward. Yeah, we call see up. Right under the bladder, or the spleen, or yeah. whatever that is we were doing. It's just a. It, it's subtle. It's something you might not notice from the outside, but you certainly you certainly can feel it. Yeah, it's it really really painful. Like like C up. It's like when you really lift the knees, you control, and then like you just like drop the knees. Like if you like just do this kind of movement with your knees like up to the solar plexus to the bladder, and like that's yeah. extremely effective. You can do it from like block or from the clinch. Yeah, and there's the end around four. Yeah. This and like the lifting the knees and like five. closing the closing the knees too, like using the hip movement, like yeah. to to strike, like small short knees. Yeah, that that's something that's really interesting about the way you throw your both your knee and your push kick is the the hip extension is is very subtle, whereas the way, the way it's often taught is this big stretch the hip out like all the way, yeah. and uh, the way you do it is so much faster. It's just about like momentum and. Uh, La momentum and um, how we how we say that before, like um, like just momentum, like the good moment to twist it, and yeah. just uh, coming from the hips, the ass and the upper, like all your body is making like one when you do this movement, and like just like a small and sudden like yeah, just push. a little quick pop exactly. from the hip. That's make everything, and then just a matter of like balance and like control. It's almost like the, the hip action when you do like the cha-cha, if you're exactly. familiar with the Latin dancing. Exactly, just about the hip action. Like mostly people are like, like, like if you know how to fight, mostly you know how to use your hips. Like it's all about hip movement. Like everything is controlled by the hips. Like for example in Jiu-Jitsu, one of the first things they tell you is like you need to control the hips. Yeah. Because the hips is the source of everything. As soon as you can use your, move your hips, move your hips or your head, like you can generate power with your body. If oh, the yeah. hips are stuck and the leg and uh, the head is stuck, uh, mostly you're like in a situation that sucks a bit. Oh yeah, I mean that's that's historically why you win in wrestling if you pin your opponent. If their shoulders yep. and hips are pinned to the floor, they're, it's a beatdown yeah. position. Like basically, uh, yeah. you're like in a really bad situation. And what a lot of people don't realize about the guard, for example, guard is not lying on your back. It's not. 
It's not lying on your back with your, your legs wrapped around the other guy. That's not jujitsu. That's a beatdown position. Jujitsu is when you can start moving your hips and your shoulders, get the hips and the shoulders unpinned and free where they can start to be offensive. That's where jujitsu begins. Unfortunately, like when it comes to jiu-jitsu, since I'm really a white belt, like I cannot really like understand those concepts uh, yet. Like, like really, like you know, the the deep understanding of the of jiu-jitsu. I cannot for the moment, but that's something I really want to learn, like uh, more. Oh and more. man, <laughs> you you definitely will, because man, you are built for jiu-jitsu. I mean, you're you're built for for kickboxing, obviously, with you know this this reach and these long legs and flexibility, but all of that translates into jiu-jitsu. Like look at look up Neil Melanson. You don't know who this is. I recommended his book Mastering Triangle Chokes, yeah. which, which I think would be a phenomenal help to you, because he's he's a tall, lanky guy. Well, he started out being lanky. I mean, he's he's big now. He put on a lot of muscle in the last few years, but he he used to train with uh, Caro Parisian and the guys at the highest end gym, and uh, Caro is a much smaller guy, but he he would tell uh, Neil uh, Melanson. Um, you should be triangle choking everybody. Oh man, another head kick. So many head kicks. <laughs> From behind. You should be triangle choking everybody with your, your legs and your flexibility. There is no reason that you shouldn't triangle choke every human being that you grapple with. And, uh, you know, being, being a, uh, taller, lanky guy myself, um, man, one of my old coaches used to, that's the end around, uh, what was that? Four, five, six, five, I guess. Five. And the beginning of the next round, you're doing handstands <laughs> in the boxing on gloves. <laughs> Working on my handstands. And it's hard enough to do handstands without boxing gloves on, man. But yeah, some of that calisthenics movement. But yeah, some of my old jiu-jitsu coaches like Shane Brenner used to get mad at me when, uh, when I would struggle doing things like the darce choke and the triangle choke. And he'd be like, if I had long, lanky limbs like you, I would darce choke <laughs> everybody. That's a gift. Don't waste it. They told me about Dar Stroke too. I need to learn that. It's it's a good move. You got long arms, man. You were built for Dar Strokes and triangles. But triangles, I use this a lot. Like that's one of the the moves that I succeed the most. Like when I fought against, like because I started to fight against like uh, Color Bell too, like with the Dave Group Challenge. Uh, since my team, like the team of the of Absolute, was missing one guy in the Color Belt, they um, I just proposed myself to fight since. Uh, Again, for me, jiu-jitsu is like, it's nothing. Like, you just fight. I, yeah. You're not going to get the urge uh, fighting jiu-jitsu when you're white belt. So yeah, worst case scenario, you tap out. Yeah, yeah exactly. If you have, like, a brain and you and tap. You squeeze you know, your neck that, a little bit. Exactly. That's fine. So I end up, like, fighting two times against blue belt. And I got a submission. I win by submission the two times. One time by a rear naked choke and the other time by triangle. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I really try to use my triangle a lot. And then when it doesn't work... Switch to TP, because it does, that works too. <laughs> that oh, yeah. pretty good. Uh, I know that I, uh, I use my legs a lot in my jiu-jitsu. Man, this round I feel like yeah. I, I just got manhandled a little bit. But it's it's not it's trying to change up easy. the game, trying to go back to some old taekwondo habits like side kicks and back kicks and whatnot, trying to capitalize <laughs> on the reach that I have. But uh, uh, low kick on man, it is a lot. puzzle sparring with you, man. Uh, the thing is, like, see, when you like, when you uh, spar with someone that you're not used to, who's a bit taller and like with a different style, that's true. That it can be a bit odd, a bit tricky in the beginning. Yeah. Like, uh, I've been sparring like with um, a lot of like strong guy in France, and um, that's true. That I got used to a lot of different style, like in fighting, out fighting. So when people like don't know me too much and don't know my technique too much, it can be a bit a bit hard to uh, to understand the, the the concept beyond my uh, my techniques. Oh, knee to the face. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's another thing you're yeah. really good at is uh, is bring that knee up, that high knee inside the clinch, and, and you were describing that that process right there. Man, so many high kicks in the clinch. Oh, no, oh, ice kick. But yeah, you, you get in that clinch, that head-to-head -head position where most guys feel comfortable because they're not going to take yeah. strikes right there. Well, uh, not elbow or, or punches, but um, you got such great flexibility. You can bring those knees right up almost to your own head yeah. to well, need the other guy. <laughs> oh. But I, I think that in mostly every martial arts, 
Like you need to work oh, on that. The Street Fighter move, right? Yeah, short you can. <laughs> you need to work <laughs> on that, like making people feel comfortable. Like, oh, there is no danger there, and then yeah. up, getting out with something. So that's why that I use this technique a lot, like holding people next to my shoulder and like kneeing them from behind. But I use this for a lot of things too, for the high kick, for example, like kick setup. Like I get really close to people, so they're like, okay, I'm safe. The only danger is punch and elbow, and then like the high kick come from over behind the neck. So. Ah. It's mostly giving like this sensation of people, like to people, of like being safe. When yeah. they can feel that I'm safe, this is where like you can really use like some tricky move. Oh, that's that's so true, man. That's so true. Um, a lot of times, especially with beginners, um, when they spar for the first time, they run away from everything. True. Every jab, every every kick, they they run away from it. True. And so, what um, what I generally teach them because nothing happens when that happens. They just run away from each other. It's jab, run away, jab, run away, jab, run away. I'll, I'll, I'll tell them, all right, um, what happens if you just take a step back? And they try it. And what happens, their opponent moves forward to fill in that space. Because again, they don't feel threatened anymore. And what happens when they move forward? They become vulnerable. Because the best time to hit someone isn't when they're running away, it's when they're moving toward yeah, you. Totally, totally. So man, that's that's a that's a great uh, philosophy of fighting. Make your opponent feel safe. You should fa feel safe and confident. When the uh. more they feel safe and confident, and the easier it is to trick them. I do something too. That's what I did a bit with you too. Is I accelerate a lot, like put a lot of speed with no power, and create a lot of holes in my guard, and like just trade stuff like that to just set one and one technique is just the high kick, mm. like scrambling, scrambling, scrambling. And in the end, it was just like to try to make my opponent scramble too, just to set this back eye kick in the neck. Yeah. And that works a lot because you just like drag people in a, a type of boxing that they feel like, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. Like he, he have like all in his guard. That's the, the punch are not affecting me. 